Hi friends, happy Friday. We have chapter four of Skeletons Don't Play Tubas from the Adventures of the Bailey School Kids series. But before we get into our questions, we are going to say our kids on course motto. So you guys know what to do. You can either repeat after me quietly in your head or say it out loud. I am smart. I believe in myself. I am a great kid. I have courage. I deserve to learn. Today is going to be awesome! Alrighty, so on Monday I asked you guys three questions. Question number one was, what were they making with the leaves? And the Bailey School Kids students were using the leaves to imprint leaf shapes onto placemats that they were going to be selling to help benefit the school. Question two, what was the loud noise? So we figured out that it sounded like it was a tuba and the loud noise was coming from Mr. Belgrave's room. And question three, what instrument would you like to play if you could? And there is not a specific answer on here that is correct, but I will share a fun fact with you. When I was in fifth grade, I actually played the oboe, and that is a woodwind instrument. Um, it is pretty difficult to play, I would say, but once I got the hang of it, it was all good to go. So I only ended up playing that for one year, and then I did join a choir group in sixth and seventh grade. So now we are going to go into our new questions, and then I will read the chapter. So for our new questions, we have three. Question number one, who is Claude? And we will learn who Claude is in this chapter. That is actually the title of the chapter as well, so make sure you are paying attention. Question two, what instrument can Mr. Belgrave not play? And there's only one. And question three, how did the students feel about band class once it was finished? So we know going into band class, some of them don't think it's important. They don't really want to go because it's in a small classroom. So overall right now, we don't think the kids enjoy band class, but we will see if that changes at the end of the chapter. So now that we have our questions, let's get reading chapter four called Claude. This is my good friend Claude, Mr. Belgrave smiled, showing his big yellow teeth as he patted the skeleton on the head. Your friend? Liza gulped and tried to scoot her chair away from Claude. Mr. Belgrave nodded. I couldn't find any place to put him, so I just left him here so he could enjoy the music. I don't think his ears work very well, Eddie teased. Mr. Belgrave's teeth flashed another big smile. Oh, you never know. Claude may be a real music lover. But enough about him. Let's begin by passing out instruments. In just a few minutes, Mrs. Jeepers and Mr. Belgrave had helped almost everyone choose an instrument. We have a picture here. That is Mr. Belgrave, and that is Claude. Melody examined her flute as Liza tried out the valves on her saxophone. Howie tried to figure out how to hold his trombone, but Eddie had already figured out how to work the cymbals. Cling, cling, everyone's ears rang with the sound. Cling, cling, Eddie was having a great time clashing the cymbals together. Cling, cling. Mr. Belgrave blinked twice and tapped his conductor's wand on a music stand, trying to get Eddie's attention, but Eddie couldn't hear him over the clanging cymbals. Cling! When Mrs. Jeepers flashed her eyes in Eddie's direction, the rest of the class froze. Melody kicked his shin to get him to stop. What's the big idea? Eddie asked. I was just getting warmed up. Mr. Belgrave smiled his big toothy grin and finished giving out the instruments. No one wants the tuba, he asked. It's just as well. It's the only instrument I can't play. Really? Mrs. Jeepers looked surprised. I was certain I heard tuba music earlier. Mr. Belgrave shook his bald head. It wasn't me. Maybe it was Claude, Eddie piped up. Mr. Belgrave smiled. Maybe it was. Students, Mrs. Jeepers said, walking out the door. I leave you in Mr. Belgrave's capable hands. I'm sure you will give him your complete attention. Mr. Belgrave smiled and picked up his conductor's wand. Let's begin, he said in a low voice. But we don't know the first thing about these instruments, Melody said. 
You can't seriously expect us to play. Mr. Belgrave looked deep into her eyes. I am dead serious, he told her, and mentioned, motioned for everyone to begin. All right. So, you can tell, Eddie is loving those symbols. Howie has his tuba, and then the flute is on the ground, and I believe that is Liza. So, we have our whole group with their instruments, and actually, he has, sorry, one correction, Eddie has a trumpet, not a tuba. The tuba is back here behind Claude. A squeaking, squeaking, honking, banging sound filled the air. By the end of the hour, Mr. Belgrave had given each student a few tips on playing their instrument, and the noise almost sounded like music. I felt like I was really playing in there, Howie smiled as they walked back to their classroom. I never knew music could be so much fun, Melody agreed. Eddie nodded. He had a great time banging the cymbals, but he noticed Liza hadn't said a word. What's wrong? he asked her. Skeleton got your tongue? Howie gasped, and Melody shrieked. When they looked at their friend, Liza's skin was deathly pale. That is the end of chapter four. So before we go, I will reread you the questions, and then I will have another chapter for you on Monday. So, question one, who is Claude? Question two, what instrument can Mr. Belgrave not play? And question three, how did the students feel about band class when it was finished? That is all I have for you today. I will see you on Monday. Bye, everybody.